So we finally have some big racing to talk about. It's the first big weekend, big Saturday of the year coming up this Saturday, January 27th, one day before my birthday, the 28th. And a great birthday present would be for integration to win the Pegasus World Cup turf. No offense to our buddies, Web Slinger and DJ Stable and uh, Lauren Carlisle, and I'm very busy. But and just even from a partial standpoint, an impartial standpoint, I'm just excited to see what he can do. Like He's one of the most exciting young turf horses we've had in a long time. But this is a big, big step up in class for him. Like This is not an easy field. Web Slinger is obviously a real hard knocker. We have the previous year's winner in a tone, masterpiece, and then, of course, Warm Heart, who is the the – the Philly, the Aiden O'Brien Philly that just missed in the Philly and Mayor turf and then went to Hong Kong and was third in the Hong Kong vase and is coming back now. I believe this is going to be her career finale before she takes up residence at Coolmore um, in Kentucky. And she's just, you know, it's one of those Aiden O'Brien superstars. It's just globe trotter shows up every time, multiple group one winner. So I think she's the horse to beat. I think integration probably is a close second choice in the end, but it's a terrific card. Uh, they, they have seven graded stakes. Obviously the two seven figure grade one races but honestly i you know even putting our interests aside like the turf race to me is more interesting this year than the dirt race like can you name some horses off the top of your head in the pegasus dirt like i i I handicapped it yesterday and i still can name more than a couple of them it's just it's a function of a like Cody's Wish retiring and having no real big standout older dirt males, but then also the way that the Saudi Cup and the Dubai World Cup have cannibalized the Pegasus, which is down to three million from the initial whatever hundred million it was when they first started the race. But, John, what, what catches your eye from Pegasus Day? Well, certainly the, the, I mean, obviously I put more time into the turf because that's the race that, that we're, you know, both associated with. Um, and, and Joe, you and I talk all the time about, are races worthy of their status? Are they worthy of a grade two or should they be downgraded to a grade three? Should it be upgraded? Well, well, this race, in my humble opinion, is a very, very strong um, kind of poster child for what a grade one should look like. Every single horse except one has won a, that, that's entered in the race has won a grade two or better, Joe. I mean, that that in itself is is a phenomenal feat. You have, you know, you mentioned you have one, two, three, four, five million dollar earners in the race. And, and Warm Heart, who, if I was just a fan watching the race, didn't have, you know, didn't have a, a horse in it, um, I would be rooting very hard for her because, you know, we talk about, oh, the horse, you know, horse in the States had to ship from, uh, you know, from New York to, you know, to Kentucky and how much it took out of them and everything like that. Warm Heart, you know, in, in, uh, in August was in Great Britain. In September was in France. I know that's not a big ship, but then oh by the way, in November it came to the states all the way to California to run in the in the in the in the you know Breeders' Cup turf uh, fillies and mares and and just barely lost. And then you know just because they had a little time on their hands, flew her to Hong Kong to run uh, against the boys in in the Grade One, and and she ran a hard you know ridden third in that race, and now she's spinning right back. I mean, she is definitely going to be. Uh, when when she gets on the plane, she gets in there right after the uh, children, you know, the families with small children and and the uh, people who who need a little extra time. She is my log that many miles, and and it's certainly going to be interesting to see whether or not she can continue her streak of hitting the board in all of these Grade Ones against the boys. Um, you know, nobody's really talking about King Max, but I think King Max is a sneaky little horse in here as well. The horse that ran you know second in the Fort Lauderdale of the Grade Two on on. Uh, on December 30th. I think that's a tough little horse also. Um, but it's going to be fun to watch integration. It's going to be fun to watch. I'm very busy, um, you know, because our sponsor, Lauren uh, Carlisle, you know, picked that one out for Chad Brown at all. Obviously, Web Slinger, you know, we're very excited about running. But to me, the, the, the biggest race, again, because I have a horse in there, but the biggest race of the day is definitely the 12th, which is the Breeders' Cup Turf inter- uh, Invitational. Pegasus Turf, yeah, I mean. Sorry, what did I say? Breeders' Cup? Breeders' Shit. Cup Turf. It's, yeah, no, well, it, it feels like a Breeders' Cup race, actually. It because does. It's, it's just, it's, it's a chalk fall. So that, that was my Freudian slip. Yeah, no, I mean, it's like, this is the most excited I've been for a start since I, since I started at West Point. Obviously, we had a couple horses in the Breeders' Cup, but, like, they weren't short prices like this. And you just don't know how the untapped potential that's there with integration. So that's what that's what's really exciting is, you know, who knows? Like, maybe he'll get drubbed and, and run eighth. I hope not. But, like... This is you love seeing those like really, really talented, not yet quite proven horses step up and face a full field of real quality horses. So just as a racing fan, I'm excited to see what he does. You know, the race, I think 
maybe this plays a little bit more against web slinger than us, or I'm very busy. Like I just didn't see how much pace on paper, yeah. you know, main yep. event is the only horse that I figure is going to be hard set for the lead. I feel like everybody else wants to make one run. Um, and integration being inside, probably Tyler's going to have to use a little bit of speed to get him into a striking position. Cause I just, I don't right. think you want to be too far back in this race, putting aside the fact that the Gulfstream turf course generally plays pretty kindly to speed and against deep closers. I don't know, John, how, how did you see the race from a, from a pace standpoint? I, I think you're right about the lack of speed, which normally when you get to these nine, 10 furlong races, that, that that's kind of the norm. I think that um, the fact that Todd Pletcher is putting blinkers on Jerry the Nipper and that he's in the two hole, I think they're going to send him. Um, I mm-hmm. think he's got natural speed anyway, but certainly being that he's in the, in the two hole um, and it's going to inherit the lead blinkers on, which, you know, you normally wouldn't do for a seven year old. You normally wouldn't say, okay, I want to change equipment that drastically. Um, but I think that's really what they're doing is they're trying to make sure that, that he, uh, he goes out there, gets the lead and then, and then can kind of slow the pace down. Um, warm heart. You can, you can see, can kind of sit off it and certainly has some tactical speed as well. Main event from the outside. I think they have to send, I think, uh, you know, Javier Castellano was going to send that one. Um, it, Joe, one of the thing that, that I, that I wanted to bring up about the race now that we've talked about all the good things in the race is can we, can we talk a little bit about masterpiece? And the fact that that now there's a, a trainer change again from uh, Richard Dutrow to Sydney Dutrow, who hasn't started a horse since 2015. What what's going on there? I feel like does, there has to be a thing where like Rick Dutrow doesn't have his license back in Florida. Right. I think yep. that's that's got to be it. But yeah, I mean that's another that's another topic for another show. Like the way Rick Dutrow is getting these horses and moving them up again, like. I, you know, people will argue to death with you and say, oh, he's just a great horseman who just knows like how to find the things the other trainers didn't find. Color me skeptical that it's been working that way for him for 15, 20 years. But whatever, you know, until he's until he fails a drug test or something, it's just speculation. But it's just right. something I've noticed. And I, yeah, it, it kind of rubs me the wrong way. Yeah, no, 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 definitely, definitely sure. And, and something else that I'm sure is rubbing, rubbing the, uh, the, 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 the regular group in racing, uh, the, 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 you know, the blue bloods and, and everything like that, which I'm always happy when, when they get, when they get feathers get ruffled. But, um, can we also talk a little bit about, about, uh, Mike Iverone and the fact that you talk about nine lives. I mean, here's a guy who, you know, he was associated with a convicted felon, um, for money laundering, Ponzi scheme, wire fraud. His trainer was, is, uh, Richard Dutrow, who then went on a 10 year ban, um, you know, as the trainer. And, and and look, I know the guy gets a lot of a lot of airtime, um, but does he realize that that he's being interviewed because he's a spectacle, not because he's important in racing? <laughs> I mean, he he owned a piece of of Big Brown. I'm starting to believe that he really feels like he needs to embody that name um, based on his fake tan and just the <laughs> the outrageous outfits that that he's wearing. He's like P.T. Barnum and M.C. Hammer without the talent, and I don't understand why so many people are drawn. To, to watching him other than it's just like a car crash to me. It's like you, you, you can't you can't look away because he's just so outrageous and 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 egregious. And, and again, I'm all for going against the norms and, and having people feel uncomfortable and, and breaking new ground and everything like that. But I wonder if he realizes that why he's getting the airtime. John woke up and chose violence today. I love it. Yeah, I mean, the big brown line, that's a great line. I I remember, though, like that was like the only time I ever was rooting against a horse to win the Triple Crown. Right. You know, like usually you, that's the feel good story. Everybody rallies around the horse. That was the one year that I was like, I don't know if I want to see this. This crew of, of dudes win, yeah. become the first triple crown winner in 30 plus years. So, yeah, it's right. a very, very vivid memory of mine that not being sad when when Big Brown was up the track. Uh, obviously a terrific horse still. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird, like how many chances people get in this business, like at least in, in Dutch Rose case, like he served his time. Like you can yeah, say that, like absolutely. he, he got the, the, the real hammer dropped on him. He served right. his time and now he's back. I just don't like that. It seems like the horses are moving up the same way they used to before he was banned, but yeah, sure. Maybe he's in just an excellent horseman, better than every other trainer in the world. Um, the other thing that's, that I think is indicative. I, 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 sense, I sense a hint of sarcasm. there. <laughs> it's, it's possible. It's, it's it's possible. Anything is possible, as Kevin Garnett would say. <laughs> um, yeah, but the thing that the, the thing that I think emblemizes the strength of this race 
is a tone. A tone right. won this race last year at like seven to two. He's going to be 20 something to one in this race. Now, granted, his form isn't as good as it was going into last year's race, but like, even if it was, would he like, he was still wouldn't be shorter than 10 or 12 to one. So this is a, a phenomenal, phenomenal race. And I think clearly the best running of the turf race so far. Just so we're, we're covering bases here and we touch on, on the dirt race. It's just really nobody that, that sticks out. You know, I think first mission is kind of the horse that I think has the most upside. He was tough beat second in the Clark. He was going to be one of the favorites in the Preakness last year, but he had to scratch in that abysmal Pre- Preakness field. And then, I mean, hoist the gold. I am a little bit interested in just because uh, West Point employs Dallas Stewart, and I personally like him, and he's done a really good job with him. He's got to go two turns. He, he romped in the in the cigar mile uh, last time out, but yeah, like look through this race and tell me there's one horse that you're like, oh my god, I, I got to be by my TV to watch the the Pegasus Dirt Race. It just has fallen off completely. Thankfully, this year we have in the counterpart a tremendous, tremendous running of the turf race.